What's up, everybody? Welcome to In Love with Horror. I'm AJ. And I'm Christy. And y'all, this is our Everything We Watched in the Month of March podcast episode, y'all. Uh, so with this, we talk about uh, movies beyond just horror. So we literally go over all the movies that we watched uh, in the previous month. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of comment on things that aren't necessarily in our niche because we watch all types of movies it's, mm -hmm. you know be a lover of all movies all film all cinema in general uh, so it's just a chance for us to give you our input and maybe there's some things you didn't know about some things that you might oh i didn't know that movie was you know good or bad it might be some movies <laughs> to avoid you know what i'm saying uh but either way it'll be a fun uh conversation to walk through all these films so sit back get you uh something to drink get you some some snacks some candy whatever and uh, let's walk through uh, all the films that we watched in the month of March, starting with Doom Part Two. Doom Part Two, y'all. Damn. What do we rate this movie? Well, we rate. So uh, we're going off our letterbox list for uh, our audio only listeners. Um, uh, we rated this five stars. Yes, five out of five. By the way, so letterbox is a, a five star rating scale. Yeah, five out of five. Yeah. Masterpiece. It was great. It was the amazing. Music was epic the visuals were epic the performances were also epic it was just a really it was just great incredible it, movie. It, that movie is an experience yes i think it is still in the cinema you've <laughs> never seen yeah. it it is because i was i was gonna say like you know we had a hard time like watching certain films recently oh, because they're still taking some IMAX it was still slots. in the IMAX, yeah. yeah um so yeah if you, if you haven't watched it in theaters yet highly recommend going to see this in theaters before it's pulled out because this is meant for the big screen like mm -hmm. the scale the scope it is it's a it's a film that's an epic you know what i'm saying yeah. like you know call back to those you know 50s and 60s epic style films where uh, shit i wish this was actually longer to be honest with you like i wish this shit was like three and a half hours <laughs> oh like, my gosh and give me a fucking a titanic give me a give me a four-hour movie with an intermission like I'll go back to doing intermissions. I'll go to fucking lobby. I'll re up on the popcorn. Let's all go to the no, lobby. Yeah, be. Let's all go to the lobby. Come on, taking it back, y'all. Nostalgic. Look, but no, seriously, like if this, I would have been cool with this movie being four hours. Yeah, I know. That's real shit. Like, cause I think about Zack Snyder's Justice League cut. That mm -hmm. shit was four hours. I watched the whole thing without stopping. Oh no, nah. because it was that good. And I think this movie could have been could have been this could have been a four hour epic. And, unfortunately, and I would have we'll sat in that seat the whole time. Full length version of this movie. No, yeah. no, no other. So, versions. yeah, Denis Villeneuve, I'm sure y'all aware. If you're not aware, he is a believer in whatever that final what cut is. Is what is, you get. Yep. That is the cut. There's, <laughs> he sees it as that is the director's cut. So yeah. there won't be an I, actual. I, get, I guess I, I get that. Obviously, I'm the director. I cut it like you yeah. Know, this, this I guess for get. him, I get it because yeah. he's Denis Villeneuve. Yeah. So they're gonna give him the <laughs> they're gonna give him the luxury to just do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. But for some people, they don't get that luxury, right? Mm -hmm. It's like no, you need to you need to make sure it fits this scope or yeah, has yeah, this yeah. rating. So sometimes a director's cut is necessary. Yeah. Uh, so I get for him, he can kind of have that flexibility. But I would love to see it like a mega extended version of Doom Part 2 and I would have watched it but like you said literally everything about this film is a masterpiece yes literally every aspect we used to listen to the soundtrack uh, yes. from time to time it's even so when we're good. riding the car the songs are not long enough uh, yeah especially Travel South yeah it's that's the hardest shit on the album uh, go look it up we need an extended version on <laughs> uh, but yeah Doom Part 2 y'all absolutely incredible I can't wait for this to come out on the 4K Blu-rays this is one definitely to own the, you gonna buy it Would Doom you? Part 2 4K Blu-ray collector right. set. They got a like, collect, collector okay, edition. I'm gonna Absolutely. start buying stuff that I want to buy. Then if you're gonna buy Dune on Blue K on Blu-ray, then I'm gonna get what I want on. Well, as long Still. yeah, if it, as long as it's worth a because you know Blu-rays Blu aren't to me? cheap. We worth we worth it to me. Yeah, because Blu-rays aren't cheap. You know, know. what I'm saying? Normally yeah. we normally y'all we just wait for the streaming. You know, for, the stream, <laughs> for it to come out on streaming. That's what we normally do. Uh, but in this instance, a movie like this, all right, is well, so just remember massive. That. All right, let's move on to the Okay, next anyway, one. yeah, Doom Part 2, five stars. Uh, next film This we month was long, because I feel like we watched this such a long time ago. Yeah, this month was, it did feel, <laughs> it did feel pretty long. Uh, but the next film we watched in the month of March, y'all, was Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes. So, of course, uh, Martin Scorsese directed, uh, Leonardo Ca DiCaprio, uh, Lily Gladstone. Lily. Um, snub at the Oscars, but it's all good. <laughs> uh, but 
Uh, we rated this one four out of five stars yeah. on Letterboxd. A lot of people did not like this movie, but I loved it. I mean, it was so good. Yeah. I I had never heard the story of, you know, this town or the how these people were affected and stuff like that. So, I mean, I like stuff like this anyway. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually really like this film a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't what I don't remember what the discourse was with this film. Was people saying it was too long? Too or? long. Yeah. Okay. So I figured that was a big piece. Um. They didn't like the ending, which I thought was very creative. Like I like the way they did the ending. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a very creative way of doing it. Like telling the story. Yeah. Like concluding like a story almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah, the biggest part was that it was just too long. You know, it's weird because it was long. It was. But I didn't feel like, I didn't have that feeling of like, okay, this shit is too long. Yeah. I, I didn't really either. get that feeling because I was so invested in the story in the I story think. and the characters. And yeah. Lily Glassman was phenomenal yeah. in this movie all the performers are phenomenal and, and was it was really also dope phenomenal. they actually used uh what was the name of the i can't um, think of them right now indigenous tribe again? gosh if you didn't ask i would i would have been able to tell you i don't know why i'm I sure can't if you remember. click on I'm, it yeah, i'm gonna try you. to pull it up here but real quick. yeah all of all of the performances were really good but um oh, oh i click this there you go but anyways i i really love the guys on though like that oh, one H. One yeah, the Osage, Osage people. Yeah, yep. the one scene when the second time after she lost her baby, lost one of her kids, and she was just like, oh. just like collapse. Is that was that was that that one? Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. It was bad. That was tough. It was tough. But I was gonna mention that you know they actually used, then they actually used like oh, legitimately yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like like legitimate Osage Nation people mm-hmm. in this film. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't at the end where they were like doing the yeah. like cultural dance and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like it was like a powwow. It was cool. I it thought was it was cool. dope. Like and to actually, because that was actually one of the complaints with Doom Part Two is not enough uh, representation considering the well, it wasn't cultural just, it wasn't influences, enough right? Representation. It was represent representation that was derivative of the actual influences of From, the story, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I feel like this film they went and got the actual people yeah. to play the parts, like. You can't really do no better than that and get the actual people to play, to represent themselves in a yeah, film, right? Yeah. Uh, but, but that no, was a good one. Yeah, this this was a good film. I actually really like this. Um, and this is one, I mean, it's Marshall Sassy, right? But uh, I, I feel like some of his films are better than others. And I actually feel like this one, to me, kind of ranks like in, in the highs for me in terms mm-hmm. of his film. I actually really liked it. Uh, yeah. But moving on, y'all, the next one that we watched was uh, Spaceman. So this was, this was the uh, Adam Sandler um, sci-fi drama on uh, over on Netflix. Uh, this was the one where it featured uh, his encounter. Like he's on a uh, you know spaceship by himself, and he encounters a spider creature, and they end up having conversations. <laughs> I'm not going to you know reveal any spoilers. Yeah, uh, but that is the nature of this film. Um, we, we we rated it three out of five. Well, you rated it three out of five. Oh, because you want to go lower. Yes, this was boring. <laughs> you know what? And it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was yeah. completely different than I expected it to be. I don't know. I I, it, I will admit that it that it was very slow. But yeah. there was something about it, it was that was like... slow. I think it was so weird that I was like, okay, like, how is this going to play out? Yeah. And I actually really liked the ending a lot. Like That ending was dumb. Really? Well, we won't do any spoilers because <laughs> we don't, we don't, you know, in this video, we don't spoil I would, anything. I would have probably given it two and a half. And so you said three. So I just put it in. Yeah, I, it was three for me because I actually really liked the, I like the messaging. I like how the story concluded. The messaging? Yeah. As in what? Well, because I, I, I feel like, I feel like saying what the messaging is okay. would, would spoil yeah. it. You got to act right. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Then it, you won't have no problems. Yeah, it deals then with. Then you will have no problems. No, but I think it also <laughs> deals with like your priorities and mm-hmm. uh weighing family versus career and mm-hmm. like it, now, well, it's a wider scope of the message yeah yeah i was gonna say i did like adam sandler himself but i just yeah. the story was just super yeah. slow. it wasn't no like slow burn there was no burn it was just slow <laughs> yeah it was slower but i don't i don't know i know i know a lot of people didn't like this yeah i didn't mind it uh i think it was Weird enough to keep me interested throughout the whole movie. Okay. Um, but yeah, Skinny Human. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> skinny Human. Uh, but anyway, the next film that we that we watched. Uh, Ghost Watch. 
Are we skipping this one, right? Yes, that yeah. was a documentary. Yeah, we're skipping the documentaries in our list, y'all. So the next <laughs> one we watched was Ghost Watch. Uh, so this was a film that came out in 1992. It is a uh, BBC film, right? Mm -hmm. It was a found footage film, but it aired as if it was like a live, like an actual legitimate like news broadcast, yeah. right? So this film, first of all, it's ahead of its time. Yeah, like that's just for real. It's ahead of its time, but it's kind of like if you've watched Late Night with the Devil and how that. Check out our review if you haven't seen that. By the way, <laughs> uh, if you've seen that film, how it portrays, you know, an actual episode of a late night TV show, Ghost Watch portrays a live Halloween broadcast from a news network mm -hmm. uh, where they uh, visit this family. Uh, it's a it's a mom and her two daughters mm -hmm. uh, who've been experiencing some paranormal activity, and they treat it like. Like a live news broadcast yeah. to the point where they got like people phoning in, yeah, and you making know calls, seeing what they calls. See, There's see like a, on the thing. they have people that are, you know, they got a they have a team that's actually at the house, you know, with the camera and a reporter walking through, and people outside the, the house. There's people outside. Like, <laughs> it's almost an event, but then they have people back at the news station, yeah, where the guy's almost like a host of the event, yeah. and they'll cut back to him, and they'll have you know like uh, experts that they talk to the the call centers so you can call in and. and you know, ask questions and stuff. It's treated like a legitimate broadcast. And that's part of the charm of this is uh, it makes it feel more real. Mm -hmm. um, but this movie, I'm telling y'all, when you watch it, you'll see a lot of the how like things like paranormal activity, things like that. Other yeah. found footage franchises got a lot of inspiration from this because yeah. I'm watching them like. Damn, this shit is like paranormal activity, yeah. like down to some of the actual paranormal framing of the shots. Freaking, um, like even some of the conjuring stuff, like yeah, the whole family aspect and trying to investigate the house and following things. You know, it's very similar to a lot of stuff we see. Yeah, in and uh, years. we rated this uh, three and a half out of five stars. Uh, I, I honestly think this is really something special. I had never heard of it. Um, I think you had brought it to my attention mm -hmm. and I just so, as we were watching, I was so shocked. I think I even yeah. said it out loud. I was like, this shit is ahead of its time. You did. Like yeah. if, if it wasn't like dated by like the full screen format. Cause this the, came out before the Blair Witch Project, which came out in 99. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This came out in 1992. Yeah. And when you watch it, it don't feel like it did. No. That shit feel like came out like. Today, but just, you know, they right, put it old style. They put it old style. <laughs> this movie is so impressive, y'all. Go check yeah. it out. It's, I think we watched it on Amazon Prime, didn't we? Probably. Like, I think it's through, or through Shutter. I think or it's on like AMC Plus. AMC Plus. Mm -hmm. Check this one out, y'all. This is really something special. And uh, it'll let you know where a lot of people got their inspirations from. This is, I don't know if this was the originator for some of it, but it is amazing how ahead mm -hmm. of its time it was. But that was Ghost Watch, y'all. Uh, the next film, I think you had just watched this one. It yeah, was, uh, it, comes it comes at, at night. night. But that was a rewatch. I remember watching this a long time ago. Did you watch this a long time ago? Yeah, too? I have seen this one. Um, uh, who directed this one? Because I really don't remember. I'm not sure. Christopher Abbott is in it, who's going to be the, in the Wolfman movie. Yep. It's kind of what prompted me to watch it. And it just came to Max. So Let's see. This was... Let's see. Crew is directed by Trey Edward Schultz. Uh, what what do they do? Oh, some stuff I don't remember. But yeah, so I, I I remember when this film came out back in 2017. And yeah, this was unfortunately the victim of bad marketing. Yep, because <laughs> looking at this poster, that shit looks. Scary. That's a nice ass movie poster. That shit is creepy. I was like, ooh, this looks good. But I remember, you know, watching it then because of the poster, and I was like, not oh, only I the forgot. poster, but the trailers. Well, I don't even remember the trailers, but either way, like you said, bad marketing. You don't see nothing in this entire movie at all. And the story itself is not what it looks like it should be. <laughs> so I can't remember this movie super good because it's been a while. I only watched it well, once. Well, there's like a family who are like Yeah, it's like a survival, off, yeah, it's apocalyptic a, survival Apocalyptic thing. time, right. Yep. Yeah, like there's something... Yep. Kind of like a disease or whatever mm -hmm. virus that has spread out, and people are just trying to like you know stay safe, yep. stay away from each other, it's like stuff a like that. But he, they thing. end up taking in another family, mm -hmm. and then the kid stuff gets starts sick. to play out. The yeah. little kids get sick. That's basically what happens, and 
Nothing else happens in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I was really disappointed in this, actually, but the performances were really good. Yeah, you know what? Actually, because I didn't watch this when it first first came out, I waited a little bit. Yeah, uh, and because I waited, I actually really liked this movie. I did. Hmm. Maybe you need to rewatch it. I actually did, and it, but it was be, it was because I already had the expectation of what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, see I, I if didn't. you watch it based purely off the poster. Look at that poster. I know. It's, it's like, the, so, oh, there's something out so there. For our audio Even the name of the movie, it comes at night. Yeah. So for our, <laughs> for our audio listeners, the poster, if you remember, was uh, a dog and it's facing towards like basically nighttime, like just darkness. Just darkness. And it says it field. comes at night. And, you know, that title implies like, you know, Creature, something monster, demonic, supernatural, something thinking, crazy. Oh, something's out in the woods, yeah. but no. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I remember the marketing saying stuff like, oh, this is horrific. You know, it it implied that this was like a heavy horror movie. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, it wasn't. Nah. But I remember I waited a little bit before I watched this. I waited mm. a little bit of time. And so, I already was on game that yeah. it wasn't a horror movie, that it was more like a apocalyptic drama. Mm-hmm. And when you watch it with that in mind. Your how you receive it is totally different. Yeah. So I think that's why I, did, I think that's why I kind of liked it. I don't know. Um, well, maybe you should. But you rated it. it. You rated it a three out of five, and I'm kind of because of the performances. I kind of agree with the, that. The tone of everything and the mm-hmm. way that everything looks. It looks. It's really great good. looking movie. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It was just the story for me. I was just if like, they Ugh. didn't, yeah, if they didn't fuck up the marketing on this, I think it could have been critically received even mm-hmm. better. I, I don't even know, or maybe not critically, but audience received yeah. better. Um, but yeah, you rated it three out of five. I kind of agree with that. But y'all, y'all let us know what you think about it comes at night because I feel like this one's definitely a mixed bag. Because mm-hmm. yeah, if you're one of the people that watched it right when it came out, you're probably supremely disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, moving on to actual disappointments. Your favorite pure movie, shit, <laughs> uh, is Imaginary. <laughs> That so this just came out, y'all. This came out. This was a uh, early March release. Yeah, um, we don't have to go too deep with this because we do have a full review about this. Yeah, we got channel. a full review where we talk about how horrible it is. <laughs> we rated it a one and a half on Letterbox out of five. Yeah, um, which I feel like is really should be one. <laughs> well, the I half figured, is from you. Yeah, the yeah. half is from me because I think I would have went. Closer to two. Wow. Because, like I told you what I said in the review, right? Like, I really liked the imaginary world. I really liked... What else did I like? I can't remember now. Yeah. <laughs> well, keeping, but anyways, it, keeping it spoiler free. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's just a lot of... I don't know. There's just a whole bunch of concepts in this movie. The concepts are good. It's just the execution they, is yeah. horrific. The performances were weird. Yeah. Like, the Wanda's got way better performances she does. than that. And I think it was just something about the way it was directed and edited just didn't... Directing and writing. It didn't feel good. Mm. Um, and it, it was just... This movie was just terrible. I also remember just sitting there thinking, like, this is so bad. <laughs> uh, but go check out our full review on this yeah. one, y'all, over, over on... Uh, you can watch it on our YouTube channel or over on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Check out our review on that. Uh, now, moving on to um, another found footage film. We got Frogman. So this film... Letterbox says it came out in 2023. I don't know of the exact time frame when it came out. I don't know if it was last year or this year. In oh, terms well, of it US came release. out as far as like it was produced and then put in festivals and stuff like that in 2023. In 2020, okay. But so it that, actually came all on VOD this past month. Okay, yeah. Month. So yeah. It, yeah, it just came on VOD um, uh, this year, y'all. And this is one you can rent over on Vudu, mm-hmm. right? And uh, we rated it three and a half out of five stars. And I actually really liked this movie a lot. It was pretty good. This movie was... Interesting. It original, surprised me. Creative. Yeah, it was very creative. It was original. <laughs> uh, it's got the the, fla- the found footage formula that you expect. Yeah. Uh, basically, the premise is there's a local urban legend of of a frog man. He's yeah. Like a, he's a part frog, part human. Yeah. And the lead character had captured video footage of this supposed frogman right. as a child on his but old no one thought videotape. his footage was real yeah no one thought it was real and they like made fun of him or something like that yeah because um, he's he's trying to be like a filmmaker yeah and so as an adult he basically goes on a mission to try and head back to his hometown trying to and get see if he back. can get that footage again of frogman mm-hmm. and the adventure and craziness starts from there yeah i was very shocked by like the special effects yeah which i thought were really good yeah at first i didn't like the i didn't like the choice of putting it on that like uh I forgot what that 
type of tape is called. The, yeah. Uh, but it's a certain type of uh, tape where it's got, you know, that super like old school mm -hmm. VHS vibe to it. Yeah. But even a I little bit worse fit. than that. At first I didn't like it, but then it started to grow on me mm -hmm. and I felt like it, it fit what the yeah. movie was going for. Uh, the performances were good for found footage. Um, and ultimately, like I always say with found footage, right? It's all about the payoff. It is. And the payoff that was insane. Awesome. It was so insane. It was crazy. I was like, what the heck are we watching right now? And wasn't was this the one that had like a, a catchy melody or something like that? I remember I something feel like it did. I can't remember yeah, super good. It's been it a while. It did, it did. But there's, I something can't about right the, now. there's something about the frog man. Yeah. That it was some sort of song or something. Yeah. I can't remember that I, I liked. It was interesting. Uh, but this, yeah, this movie's fun, man. Check check out Frogman. Definitely support this one. Yeah. This is a super, you know, low budget, small film. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it was it, directed by Anthony Cousins. Anthony Cousins. Not, yeah. yeah okay. Definitely show this, this film some good. love because it it really surprised me. It's something special. So go check out Frogman. Uh, the next film we watched is a classic, y'all, from 2000. Final Destination. We did. And the first we, one. It was still good. It's still good. I was up pacing the floor like it's I didn't awesome. know what was about to happen. This movie is... <laughs> This is why it's a classic. It was That's so why good. it's spun up like another, you know, four films after it. Yeah. Like, this movie is good. We rated it uh, three and a half out of five. It was still good. Uh, and yeah, it's, you I know, I mean, obviously there's cheesy moments, but yeah. the action scenes, like the sequences of things playing out, those yeah. were still it holds really, up. really good. The effects hold up really yeah, good. Yeah, they did. Uh, um, yeah, because like, you know, if like some of the lines and stuff like that were oh, all that yeah. great, but it was... It's too... The, it's, it's late 99, you know, 99, 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavy. <laughs> Everything, right? Hairstyle. Like, hairstyle, wardrobe. The, lo the low riding pants yeah. slash jeans. So some like, of those things obviously yeah. don't hold up, but the actual, you know, uh, death sequences do. Yeah. Those are like, really good. The story concept is so dope. Yeah. Tony Todd, man. Still. As Blood, as was a Bloodsworth is, is the dude. Blood, name. yeah. That dude's so, like, man, I love the part where he talks about uh, messing with a. Uh, uh, the Grim Reaper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't even want to fuck with that Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that shit is so hard. It's so, so dope. good. Um, hey, go check out our Tony Todd uh, yeah, video, video over on YouTube. Yeah, we Tony Todd. I yeah, about that. Where we talk about like just all the great All the horror contributions films. he's made. Yeah, it's a horror specifically. Obviously, he's done way more than that. <laughs> a but lot. The dude's an absolute legend and he's awesome at Final Destination. But this film holds up so well. Like, if you haven't watched it in a while, yeah. go back and revisit it. We need it. to watch the rest of them because yeah, we're going to go back to making another one. Yep. Yeah, the Same. new one's coming out. Uh, is it this year? I don't know. Did they give us a date? I don't think they gave a date yet. It was probably gonna be next like year then. Probable between now and next year. Yeah, now. probably sometime between now and next year. Uh, they're bringing back Tony Todd as well as Worth. Uh, we're getting a lot of like backstory. You know, backstory with that new one. So it's a good time to go revisit all the Final Destinations. That's and that's what we plan on doing. And we started with the first one in March. Now moving on to a dope ass surprise yes. for this year, y'all. Late night with the devil. We gave that four out of five stars. Now, uh, this is another one we won't spend a whole lot of time on because yes. we also have a, have a, full, a review full review on uh, this one as well. Uh, but this one, I wanted to see who uh, who actually uh, directed this because I can't really remember off the top. Oh, yeah. It was uh, uh, Cameron and uh, uh, Colin Ka Carnes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ca Cameron and Colin Carnes. Uh, they made something absolutely special. They did. Well, late night with the devil. David Dosmachian is, uh, or David Dosmachian yeah. is the uh, lead in this. Uh, in this, I mentioned it earlier in this in this uh, podcast, but that um, you know he's playing a uh, '70s TV host. The film is made in the style of a mm -hmm. of a '70s show, as if you're watching it as it aired. It's even got the full screen format. Mm -hmm. Um. And the basic premise with this is this particular late night TV show aired a Halloween special episode live on TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically the, the concept of the episode was to prove if the supernatural is real or not. Yes. And when I tell you shit gets crazy, y'all. It does get really crazy. Shit gets crazy. And this has the found footage formula, but it's executed in such a special, unique, original, creative way. The payoff is awesome. Performance is incredible. Mm -hmm. Effects were dope. Story is good. Um, it's just a, it's just an amazing film. Mm -hmm. Like I guarantee you, this is gonna be at, the, at, at for sure in our top ten, and then maybe even higher on the list because this yeah. is a, a fantastic film. Go check out our full review um, where we dive into a little bit more details on it. But late night with the devil, and that full review is on Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. So go check that out, y'all. Uh, moving on to No Way Up. I did not watch this one, but I know you watched it. This was the film that came out this year where. 
This is the one the plane crashes, right? Yeah, the plane crashes into the ocean. Yep. And these group of people have to try to survive because there are sharks in the water. In the water. And, you know, the poster looks really cool to me. It's like, a, I will got say the it's a airplane, good you got the shark. Yeah, it looks pretty it's cool. A good poster. Um, but yeah, it wasn't that great. I gave it two stars. It was what you would think it would be. It's yeah. like super cheesy. None of the dialogue was good. Um, a lot of like stupid things were done. Yeah. <laughs> it was just really pitiful, honestly. I gave it two stars because of the concept, right? Like, I've never seen that done before. Like, sure. a shark movie with an airplane in the water. Come on, that's pretty cool. It's unique. Yeah. So, um, and I watched the whole movie. I made it through fine. So, I was like, okay, I'll give it two stars. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, in reality, the movie is probably worth less than two stars. Uh, that's exactly why I didn't watch it because I knew it was not going to be You don't great. be giving stuff a chance. I Maybe. give things a chance. I, if if it's going to waste my time, I'm not going to watch it. You don't know, though. This movie was going to be a... You, see, okay. If you rated Pure it two stars... Your example is Late Night with the Devil. I've about? been talking about this movie for at least two months before it came out, right? Sure. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited about this movie. You were just kind of like, meh, whatever. But... No, uh, that's not true. You were not hype about it. I might not have been like because, going crazy, but I, would, I, but I never said like, oh, this movie's not... This movie's going to be I bad or nothing. T- Twenty dollars right now. You did not think it was going to be as good as it oh, was. Oh, I definitely didn't know it was going to be that good because you gave it a chance. You didn't give no way up, no chance. I here's the thing. Well, I watched in this the, case, it didn't need one. But I'm just saying, in general, you don't be giving things a chance. No, no. <laughs> I give stuff a chance if it actually is worth giving it a chance. Right? Late night with the devil is an example of. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, let's give this a chance. So a plane crashing into the ocean with sharks in the water is but not. You can watch the trailer or something, and you can tell. <laughs> No Way Up is one of those ones where, like, you watch the trailer and you're like, oh, yeah, this shit's going to suck. <laughs> There's, like, it's the vibe. You can tell. This is one of those films. And obviously, I was right because you gave it two stars. <laughs> and if you gave it two stars, it's really, like, a one. Maybe. Okay. All anyway. Right. Moving on. Moving on, y'all. So, moving on to the next film, we got uh, a video, uh, a film that we just did a video on. Oh, yes. An absolute, well, I actually call it a masterpiece. I think you said it's not quite. But for me it's a masterpiece. <laughs> not quite. We got 2013's The Conjuring from James Wan. This is the this is the film that kicked off the entire franchise. This thing, this yeah. franchise has become a fucking juggernaut. Uh, we gave it uh, four and a half. Well, I would give it five. <laughs> it's four and a half. You gave it four and a half stars. Uh, and the, it's The Conjuring. Uh, everyone knows if they've never seen it, they at least know of yes. The Conjuring. Mm-hmm. This is a you know, modern classic at this point. Like I said, kicked off this whole ass franchise. James Wan killed it with the Conjuring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Performances from everybody involved. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, and we did a, we did a, a video on, uh, talking about the Conjuring. Uh, we just posted um, uh, a few days ago and, or yesterday, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> April 1st. I think we posted yeah, we on did. April 1st. We did. It's not April Fool's joke. We did post it on April 1st. But we talked about that this film is, the concept of it is so simple. Very simple concept. But it's just so Very effective, effective, man. Very scary. Story. Like, you really care about this family. Yeah. You know, of course, The Conjuring tells a story of uh, the parent family and the haunting that occurs in their home. Mm-hmm. Ed and Lorraine Warren, the paranormal investigators, uh, you know, the, the famous investigators, you know, they go and they... Um, they help this family and it's, it's a haunting story that the format that we're very accustomed to, mm-hmm. but it's just executed so well. It's yeah. so like real in a way that it just, it's something special. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Anything you want to add to that? Well, it's my favorite horror movie for a reason. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just mostly the story. I just yeah. really love the story. I really like the characters in this movie. Yeah. Um, the nitpicks I have are just, they're nitpicks, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, overall, it's still a great, a great movie. Yeah. A hundred percent. The Conjuring is, we rewatched it and it's still, uh, still amazing. Yeah. Y'all go check out our video, uh, that talks about why the Conjuring is so effective over on our YouTube channel. I'm moving on to the next film. Uh, we got Oracle. Uh, this is a film you watched. You want to talk about this? Yeah. So, yeah. Listen. So, this was actually suggested by someone on TikTok. Uh, one of our videos. They commented mm-hmm. said, you should check this movie out. And um, I'm not sure why they suggested this movie. I have a feeling of why. But anyways. So, mm-hmm. it's about this girl who gets a babysitting job at a house where... The house is a like a was a plantation. Okay, and it's haunted by a woman who used to live there, 
as well as the slaves that also live there. And it's it's not that great. Mm. It's pretty sad, actually. Because, I mean, I feel like the, the slave aspect was like, and the racism aspect was like super heavy. Like, I'm going to just say this because I don't feel like it's like a major spoiler, but the woman who was asking the girl to babysit actually like showed up at her job and was like, hey, I was just checking your references. So that's why I'm here. Because I guess she used her actual work as a reference on her application to okay. on the app or whatever. And she was like showing her a picture of the house. And she was like, oh, don't worry. You know, we're just normal people. We just happen to live in this plantation. You know, it's, you know, it was just really, really weird. It's just like, who talks like that? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, because obviously the main character is black and these, this family is white. Yeah. And so that's why she said that. But it was like, she never said, oh, I don't want to babysit because you live in a plantation. She just automatically assumed like, oh, you were going to have a problem with babysitting. She's making because, assumptions. Yeah, she yeah. was. I don't know. I didn't like it. Um, but yeah, the performances weren't all that great in the movie. Um, there is one actress in here who has been in other kind of like rom-com stuff or whatever okay. that she's done better jobs at. So this one wasn't for her. It wasn't a good hmm. uh Thing. I would not suggest anyone to watch this. <laughs> okay. Honestly, it wasn't that great. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll make sure to avoid it. So she gave it two. Yep. All right. Well, moving on to the next film. We got a film that came out last year, I believe it was last year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh it is Speak No Evil, y'all. What what uh country did this come out of? Do you remember? No. Okay. <laughs> I was I gonna can't. say it's Dutch, but I might be wrong on that. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna see, I'm gonna see if I could check and see if they have it on here or not. They might not. Oh, Danish. Danish. Oh, yeah. They visited a Dutch family. Oh, they, oh, but I think it. it's... Uh... Okay. Well, I was hoping I could find what, like... I know it's because it's, a, sure, it's a sure. foreign film. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just wanted to, you know, pay respects to the country that, that, um, that you know, that the film came out of. But anyway, uh, speaking of evil, y'all, this is one... It's kind of a disturbing film. So, yeah. Because it involves... Well, does saying what it involves is is it a spoiler? I mean, you keep it pretty general, right? Like a well, okay, I'll, family. I'll keep, it, I'll keep it general. So yeah, like uh, this family goes on. This is how it opens. This family goes on a vacation, mm-hmm. and they meet another family. Yeah. Um, and they kind of they kind of become friends on this vacation, and it's kind of you know they're there for a little bit of time, not a long time, but enough to where they. Our, the, the family that we follow made an impression on this other family. Mm-hmm. And so when they get back home, they actually receive a letter from that family saying, hey, like, why don't you come uh, visit us at our home and we can hang out and, mm-hmm. you know, kind of have like another little vacation together again. <laughs> so they actually decide to go. Yeah. And it's just kind of odd things start to happen with this family. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah. It's one of those ones where like, I went in, I don't even, I don't even I've never even seen a trailer for this. Mm-hmm. So I went in like super blind. And I think I made it even more like. Were you mad? Interesting. We didn't watch this together. I watched it and then he watched it. So I don't know what your reactions were when you were watching it. Oh, uh, my main reaction was, wow, these people are stupid. So <laughs> yeah. That was my that's, main that was thought mine process. Too. <laughs> was like, these are the dumbest characters I've ever seen in my entire life. So that's a lot of what I was saying while I was yeah. watching it. And that's why I rated it what I rated it. Because it's like. Could this story have been conveyed without the parents being so dumb? Because I feel like the dumbness was like on a thousand. Yeah. Like some parts I feel like could have been like, some of this stuff could have been done differently. You know, yeah, they I, didn't, I, I mean, yeah, stuff could have been done differently, but I think it was, in, I think it was intentional right, to make yeah. them that stupid. I know, but it was very uncomfortable to watch. Some of, and, and I don't know, like me being a mom, it was just some of the things that happened. I was just like, there's no way in hell that would have been Christy because hell no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think most most parents watching this would be that way. But um, yeah, this is one you just got to watch. Um, it, you know, it is disturbing. Not so much in like a gore. Oh, no, disturbing. No, 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 no. It's more it's just the, like, it's I more can't the, believe the, this. The, the themes yeah. are just are And they're remaking disturbing. this, an American version yep. of this. And I always get weary about stuff like that because, like, for example, The Martyrs, to me, the French version of that is, like, really good. But the Americanized version, it sucks really, really bad. Yeah. So I always worry about, you know, American renditions or adaptations of other foreign films because they're never really as good as the original yeah. one is. So we'll see, though. I but- will say, though, it's got James McAvoy attached. 
I don't care. Man, I like James McAvoy. <laughs> I do a lot. too. But I'm just saying. So I'm gonna like, watch it just off of that one aspect. James well, we're gonna be watching good. it. I'm just wondering how good it's gonna be yeah. compared to this. And yeah. then also the fact that we already know this story, will it be as effective? Yeah, they might even try to switch it up a little bit. They you might never know. Yeah. because um, remember James Mack went split? Damn. Yeah. That shit was amazing. That was Glass, really good. That's like the oh, best so movie dope. ever. Glass was dope too. I know some people don't like that, but I liked Glass. That was good. Uh but yeah, check out the Speak No Evil. Yeah, the, the themes are disturbing, but it's definitely an experience. You will feel some type of way at the end of this film um and it's one of those ones that spark conversation i definitely think we have to do a video on this at some point yeah i and think we us... do have it on closer to when the new one comes out oh yeah yeah. so yeah maybe that's a good time well when the new one's you know, gonna, gonna come out we'll do a deep dive on September. this because this is this is a crazy mm-hmm. one if you've seen it i'm sure you're gonna, you're gonna sign off in the comments being like yeah speaking of evil is crazy yeah uh, moving on to our next film. Uh, this is one I think you watched, right? Uh, Tour Strap. Tour Strap from 1979. It's a Three stars. It, y'all, I'm not going to talk about this movie because we're going to be talking about this again. But it basically, it's kind of just like, you know, it kind of has like Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes, honestly. Like a group of kids go on vacation and they end up in this town where things are weird mm-hmm. and things start happening to them. But it's extremely, it's like, Kind of like we talked about Drag Me to Hill, Drag Me to Hill on recently. Yeah. And about how like it's very over the top crazy mm-hmm. and then also still kind of scary. This is kind of like hits that pocket a little bit. Okay. Like yeah, yeah. um, but not without like without the supernatural element. It's very kind of like a slasher, but it still has like very hilarious uh parts to it that sure. make it just like super over the top like who thought of that type of thing mm-hmm. but uh yeah we're gonna be talking about this one later on movie club with Corey from wilkie's movies and music okay um in may but yeah so check that one out it's now available on tubi i believe okay perfect hey tubi that's free go check it out <laughs> our next film is another one that you watched uh, yeah called you shouldn't have let me and this in. is a tubi original mm. and it <laughs> just came out this month it's about, gosh, what is it about? It's like a vampire. That's what it sounds situation. like. Situation, like yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> I gave it one and a half stars. Wait, what does my review say? <laughs> I uh, think my review see. was like, yeah, oh, yeah. It says I have a cauldron. I throw in um, the the Vampire Diaries. That's what it meant. To, I don't know why I put. TW, but it's supposed to be the Vampire Diaries, Fifty Shades of Grey, Gore, and Sex, and Boom. And I said it was watchable. <laughs> How can you say watchable and give it one and a half? <laughs> like, as that far as like, sense. I finished watching the movie. Okay. But no, it was not good at all. Okay. I, and it's funny because it's like, two B movies are hit and miss, I guess, you know? Like, a lot more misses. <laughs> But anyways, y'all can skip that one. Don't watch that. Okay. So yeah, skip. Uh, you shouldn't have let me in. Y'all. Yeah. All right. So the next one we watched um, was another film we did a full review on. So we won't spend too much time on it, but it was uh, Immaculate. Uh, that came out, <laughs> what, like the middle of March towards yeah. the, the back end. Uh, this is actually one that we were kind of split on because- It's I, not kind of. We are. Yeah. I liked it. I did. And you didn't. <laughs> um, so it- we because of that Nate, because of that fact we settled on two and a half out of five stars on Letterbox. I think it should be at least three. Nah, I think three would be two and a half because it felt it, to me it, it felt like a very like middle of the road film. There's things I like, there's things I didn't like. Well, it wasn't middle of the road for me, so yeah. that's why it's two and a half. Um, and but, I explained all why in my in the review, but I just did not like it. It wasn't for me. Yeah, yeah, I like the I like the concept, uh, and like I mentioned, you know, it felt like a '70s like horror film, and I don't know. There's just some things I thought were really cool. Um, obviously, the 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 payoff is kind of like where people have really been talking about. Uh, I thought the payoff was okay, uh, but I, overall, I kind of liked it. But uh, go check out our full review so we can you can hear like exactly our in depth thoughts on this one. Again, that full review for Macklet. Can be found on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, y'all. I was moving on to our next film. I think this is another one that you watched called yep. You'll Never Find Me. That is on Shudder. It just came out this past month as well. Um, this one is a uh, another indie. Um, these two creators who have made shorts. So this is their very first full-length feature film. Mm-hmm. And I actually really like this one up until the very end. 
like the ending is the only thing that I had a problem with this movie, but it's very atmospheric, um, claustrophobic. The story is really good. It's about this guy who um, he lives in like a trailer park and this woman, this random woman knocks on his door. She's covered it like super wet. There's a big storm outside. She has no shoes on. And the movie is kind of like you're trying to figure out who should be weary of who is it? Patrick, the main character, is there something wrong with him? Is he going to hurt this girl? Or is this girl got some kind of ulterior motive of, for her showing up at his house? Because she don't leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's times where he kind of gives her an out and she doesn't take it. It's really good. It's like a, a back and forth cat and mouse type situation within the confines of this trailer home. And it's just really crazy. During a dark thunderstorm. But the ending is... Once you get a rev a reveal of what actually is happening, to me, it doesn't make sense compared to everything else that happened before it. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, it was good. I actually think you should watch this one because I would okay. like to know what you think about the ending. Okay. Honestly. I have to check this one out. Then. Yeah. yeah. You'll never find me. Where can people find this one on? Shutter. I said Shutter. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. You gave it a three out of five stars. I did. Now, one thing I didn't, I didn't, I, I don't see on here, but I just kind of wanted to mention it while I just while I have it on my mind before I forget. I did watch Terrified uh, this month. I oh, didn't put it okay. on Letterbox though, because mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I'd, I'd be forgetting about Letterbox. I, that's you know, you kind of put I, in. I go you on do Letterboxd the entries every day. Stuff. Yeah, you you do the entries. We just talk. I just talk about it. Uh, but I did watch Terrified, and I wanted to look it up real quick because I can't remember who what the the name of that uh, director. Because it was the same director that made When Evil Lurks. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Can I pronounce it? Yeah. This? It's Damien Rugna. Damien Rugna. So, mm -hmm. Damien Rugna, um, of course, everyone knows uh, When Evil Lurks, but uh, he made, uh, I don't was it right before? When I don't know about Lurks? right before, maybe a year before. Is that what you meant? Uh, it came out like 22? Uh, nope. 2017, actually. So, it's been a while. Yeah. Let me see if I can get this thing to actually show me. Well, it says it in the films. thing there. You saw it Go somewhere back. else? Go back. Which one? Well, it just says it right there. Oh, 2017. Okay, so it was a while. It was a minute ago, but he made this film called Terrified. And it ha has very similar... Uh, uh, no, it's not exactly the same. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the same in terms of like, you know, people trying to solve like a paranormal issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but it takes place in like a neighborhood. And this guy... Um, he has a neighbor who's been doing weird, weird shit. And it's almost like this whole neighborhood is, uh, is experiencing like some weird paranormal activity that's going on. Like, you know, people have passed away. Uh, we have a very gruesome, like opening scene. Um, and it just kind of goes from there. I'm not going to give away too much because I feel like part of the, the charm of this is kind of not really knowing what to expect or exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Cause you learn what's going on as you watch it. Um, but it has a lot of the, like how, you know how When Evil Lurks is very graphic. This has a lot of that same like graphicness where it's like they show you what's happening. Like one of the kills from the opening is very brutal. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of what's occurring and the emotions that are involved. Um, so it maintains that uh, throughout the film. And uh, it, it even, well, let's just say the, the graphicness is there. Even to the, the even the violence and who it happens to happens in this one as oh, well. Okay. You know what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. I, uh, I might leave that one alone. Yeah. I feel and like even with, with when evil lurks, it was too much for me. Yeah. So that, that it is a lot, but the film is very unique. The concept is very unique. Uh, and if you like horror with interesting concepts and like originalness, like this is the one for you. It is a foreign film, of course, a so subtitled. Some of you don't like subtitles, but. Y'all gotta get past that because there's a lot of good foreign films. And this is one of them. Check out Terrified. If you like what if you like what the if you liked when evil lurks, you'll like Terrified as well. Uh and if I had to rate it, I would probably give it like uh somewhere around three to three and a half out of five. Um I actually really enjoy Terrified. That's not on our letterbox, but I just want to mention it offhand. I'll add it for you later. Yeah, add it for me. Yeah, because you can backdate the, the dates, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you gotta backdate that for me. Uh moving on though. Uh, the next film we had watched uh, together, went to the theaters to watch this one, and this was a uh, Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Uh, we gave it three and a half out of five, which I'm actually shocked because I I figured you were gonna say four. So yeah, that's why I'm, I'm around. Like a I'm a little bit half. lower than you because um, that's what I thought. That's why I was like, how did it get three and a half? Yeah, because I, I, I think three and a half for me is a good place to put it. Yeah, I will say three for me. Okay, it was yeah. kind of middle of the road. I did not like a lot of things in this movie. 
like some of the subs, you know, subplots and yeah. side adventures or whatever you want to call it. Some of the stuff was just not necessary. Um, in my opinion, I did enjoy like, you know, the fanfare, like seeing, you know, the old game getting back together yeah. and all of that stuff. And, um, you know, oh, it's really oh, 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 Ernie looked good. I was good, just boy. about like, to good. say yeah. that it's been really big now too. Like on I saw, like, social head- media. I saw a funny ass headline that was like, Ernie Hudson posting thirst traps on yeah. social media. So he made like a video, <laughs> oh, like a did? response okay. saying like, well, well, you know, I didn't know if you were going <laughs> to look at me like that. He's like, he but I thank you, it. you know, right. thank you so much or this whatever. Dude, this dude's like 78. And he looks amazing. And he getting around like he like 50 something. He looks it's crazy. Legit. But yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. Um, And like that one kid from Stranger Things, like. Uh, like Wolfhard, he Wolfhard. had no 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 role in this movie really. Like he had one I thing to do, that. yeah, he and really that was it. They was like, oh, we're do. just gonna give him this part right here because we don't have nothing else for yeah, him. He definitely to do. got kind of like side. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, I had a lot of qualms with this one. Man, I actually had a lot of fun with this. I was actually surprised by how much fun I was having with this movie. I feel like also the comedy, Paul Rudd. He was like. It was too much. I was like, he's funny, but y'all need to dial it back a smidge. Like everything he was everything saying. Everything he said was joke. supposed to be comical. Yeah. I was like, okay. Like, we don't get no chance to, like, even enjoy him as a character because he's saying jokes every five minutes. But Buster makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> but look, yeah, I did. I, I oh, well, sorry. I did like the fire starter guy or whatever his name Oh, was. yeah. Kamel Nanjiani. Yeah, yeah, he was, man. That dude was hilarious. Yeah. He, had, he had one line in there. I'm not going to spoil anything. Yeah. But. When I tell you that shit had me dying, I was like for a minute. Yeah, I? you were. Even after the scene, yeah, I, was I was like, still okay, laughing. dude. <laughs> like, this, I, I had a lot of fun. With it. I don't yeah. know why I couldn't like. I don't. I don't know if it's just because it's like Ghostbusters. Yeah. But it puts you in this like this mindset of like being a kid almost. Yeah. Well, so, like, I, that's I got, the, so that's that's the mindset I'm in watching this. I'm just having like so much fun with it. Yeah. Well, you know I got saying? told because I was talking to some people in the Discord group that I'm in, like. Take my opinion with a grain of salt because I really like Ghostbusters too, and a lot of people, people do don't like, like that, that movie, and yeah. that's my favorite one. Yeah. So I'm like, look, look, I like the second one, so yeah. y'all might not want to listen to my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I still think that Afterlife is better than Frozen Empire, but yeah, I still had a lot of fun with. I would honestly watch this movie again. Yeah, and even when we went, I mean, to I would watch, watch it again with the kids. Yeah, I would like to, anyways. You know, we have a funny story. Well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, there's a film later on that we're gonna mention in our list that we yeah. went to the theater to watch. Yeah. And they played the wrong movie, uh, and <laughs> Ghostbusters started. Yeah, uh, and uh, I was like, you know, the opening is really good in this movie. Yeah, I mean, I was ready to watch the other movie, but we'll t- I'll, we'll tell that story when we get to the, that film. It's it's only a few a few away, right? Uh, but that's Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire again, three and a half out of five. Let us know what you think about that because a lot of people are mixed on this one. So I'm curious of what the audience is thinking on this one. Uh, the next one that we watched was uh, Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey, the first one that came out last year. Uh, mm-hmm. So we had this one at a two two out of five, and we both just it was. I fell asleep. You did, I yeah. Was you was knocked all out. the way knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I liked the kills in this, mm-hmm. but that was it. I really did not like anything. Yeah, there was else. one kill that I really liked, um, and yeah, for the well, the ones I saw, <laughs> they were pretty cool. But the the car one. The one with the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, that yeah, was that my was, favorite yeah. one. But yeah, yeah this, there was no story to this movie. That car one. Yeah. It was just ridiculous stuff. It was like if someone like grabbed their iPhone and was like, let's make a movie in the backyard. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, that's, that's kind of being a little harsh, but it's kind of what it felt like, if I'm being honest, yeah. right? Like, it just, because I, like, I'm not going to say it was, like, super trash. Because if I'm being, it if, was I'm on keeping, the verge. if I'm keeping it a buck, like, I watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey over imaginary any day that's true that's, that's why how much two I did, stars that's how much i didn't like imagine i'd I feel like watch Winnie whenever i go to do a letterbox review like a rating i always compare it to imaginary I was like, so when i did the rating for winnie the pooh blood and honey i was like okay well it can't be less than one and a half yeah because <laughs> i'd pick this shit i'd pick this over imaginary any day yeah for sure uh, at least this one you can have fun with and you know it it knows what it is yeah um but yes, yeah, so that's that's when that's when the poop blood and honey like yeah. it kind of sucks, but <laughs> it was necessary, right, for them to be able to hey, yeah, go into they the next film that we this, watched, and then we're able to up their budget and actually make the film that I think they really they really wanted, wanted to make, to, yeah. And that's our next film we watched in the month of March, which was Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey Two. Mm-hmm. Now this shit, 
It was good. I don't give a fuck what anybody I says gave online. It four stars. Yeah, four out of five. And this this shit is awesome. It was good. I'm not, I'm not, I know a lot of people are shitting on this. Yeah, they are. But forget y'all. We, like we don't bandwagon on shit on, on our podcast. We really don't on our channel. Like we really like. I had so much fun with this movie. Yeah. Even walking out, I was like, I'm actually surprised yeah. that this that I like super this shocked. Much. I was like, shoot, I watch this right now again. Yeah, and this one actually has um, a story to it. A good plot. Yeah. Like yeah, because they had help uh, uh, writing it. The the guy that wrote uh, Summer of '84. I can't remember his name, but he. I think it's is his name Leslie or last name. That right? sounds right. Something like that. So, uh, I, can't, I can't. Leslie. I can't think. remember right off the top of my head, but they had help writing this one. This one felt like an actual movie. It did. Like even looked like a movie. It did. Scott it Chambers, really as good. Um, Christopher Robin too. Um, makeup and special effects. Oh yeah. Th- I saw a, like a clip of them actually, you know, doing the mask and yeah. make, all that stuff and making the uh, what do you call it? Like when they put like the clay. The mold. Yeah, making the molds and stuff. Yeah, they they put in some work with yeah. this one. Like you said, this is what they wanted to make, mm-hmm. it, but it took them to make that one to be able to get the funding to make this mm-hmm. next one. And this, yeah. and honestly, that made it worth it because this shit was awesome. And right? they've already confirmed we're three the third one. And now, hey, I'm hyped for the third one, and I'm hyped for the Puniverse. The Puniverse. Yeah, I'm a I'm a believer now. <laughs> you are a Puniverse. They didn't make that. I'm a Puniverse believer. I'm a, I, I believe in the Puniverse now. At first, <laughs> after watching the first, one, I was like. Mm-hmm. What's the Puniverse? But now I'm like, yeah, give me the Puniverse because I I liked the characters in this. You know, because you see, you know, Pooh, Piglet, Owl, yeah. Tigger. I liked all of them. Owl was dope. Tigger super dope. Yeah. You see all the influences. Obviously, they're inspired by all these classics like Nightmare on Elm Street, mm-hmm. Friday the Thirteenth. Um, there's a little bit. There's a slight comedy in there. Yeah. The kills are just crazy over the top. Yeah. These kills are over the they top are in the best way possible. Yeah. Like. This movie is so much fun. It was. And the story is actually decent. The performances yeah. are good. Even the villain performances are dope. Mm-hmm. And you, I like how you, it was like a kid's 90 movie where you get to spend time with the villain. Yeah. As they're plotting. Yeah. You get you get, you, you get kind of a taste of that in this. Yeah, this shit is just. Did a poll on our community tab about like who their favorite character was from this. And yeah. Tigger won from like by landslide. Yeah, it was Tigger like was awesome. 70%. Yeah. Tigger's <laughs> awesome. They're, Tigger and Al are awesome for different reasons, but they're both. Well, he was second place. So yeah. They're both super dope. Yeah. Uh, definitely check this one out when it comes out Give on us streaming. some love. Give us some love. Because like, I don't care what nobody says. This movie is so, so much fun. It's so dope. It makes me glad that Blood and Honey 1 happened mm-hmm. because then we wouldn't have gotten this. That's true. Uh, and so they did a great job with this. Like shout out to the team. Like, Man, I believe in y'all now with Pooniverse yeah. and Blood Honey 3. I'm on board. Yeah. And they should probably get even more money so they can really just take this yeah. into the fantastical levels that it should be at. If we're talking about monsters assemble, horror villain team up. Mm-hmm. I'm on board now, y'all. Yeah. Uh, but again, that was uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Four out of five stars. Check that one out. Now, the next film that we watched was uh, Godzilla Cross Kong, The New Empire. We gave this a uh, three out of five. And... Uh, this is the one we got inter- that the, the interesting, interesting story comes from. Oh yeah, yeah. So, well, we sat down in the IMAX. Of course, the previews are playing, and again, we're sitting down to watch Godzilla and Kong: The New yeah. Empire, right? And as we're watching the trailers, a trailer plays yeah. for Godzilla Cross Kong: The like, Empire. And you were like, "That's weird. I've never like, seen that before. I don't think I've ever been in a movie where a trailer <laughs> plays for the movie you're going to watch. That's right. some new shit. Yeah. And that's, so we're super confused, right? And then, um, and then. So the, the IMAX thing, thing comes so well, the IMAX thing well, happens, yeah. the countdown, and then it, it fades to black lights go down, Yeah, right? Uh, and then the Sony logo pops up. And you up. were like- I looked at you, I is was like- Is this a Sony movie? Sony movie? <laughs> this isn't a Sony movie? And you know, I don't oh, yeah. know. I was like, so I'm like, I don't know. I, I was like, is. I was questioning myself like, <laughs> is this a Sony movie? Like, I didn't realize that, but yeah. okay. And then the Columbia thing plays, and then we get the ghost core. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit. This, this is Frozen Ghost. Imp. It's the yeah. wrong movie. It's the wrong Empire. Yep. They got the Empires messed they had, up. They had the Empire. That's probably what it was. They got the Empires mixed up. So I almost mixed it up right now when I said it. <laughs> Frozen Empire, the new Empire. Right. Uh, but it's funny. Everyone in the audience is like, the what? guy next to us is like, y'all watching Godzilla, right? Like, it's the tickets y'all bought. It's like, yeah, we bought Godzilla. So they, someone ran out and they got the management and they, you know, had to like turn everything off and they fixed it and they got yeah. it loaded up. But I'm also disappointed because I kind of wonder what previews we missed out on oh, that we could have yeah. saw on the IMAX big That's screen. That's true. I didn't uh, think about that. They, maybe there were some ones that we could have saw that would have been, been cool. really cool. But anyway, uh, Godzilla Cross Kong New Empire uh, is exactly- also, you know, they, they played the tarot trailer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why are they playing the trailer for this movie? For the, you know, and obviously it's a family friendly. I know Ghostbusters is family friendly, but it's not 
Yeah, it's family friendly. Ghostly, you know? Yeah, I and thought that was weird, tarot, too. I was like, I was, I was like, cover, tarot. I was like, damn. Covering up my, because we took our seven-year-old with yeah. us. I had to cover up his eyes. I was kind of shocked they played it. I was like, damn, tarot with this? Yeah. That's a crazy preview. So I'm guessing that's why they had that one in, because yeah. of Ghostbusters. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Godzilla Cross Kong, the new empire, is exactly what I thought it was. We get yeah. a three out of five. Um we're not there for the humans. No. And we're that's why I put in my Kaiju review. I was like, action. we're watching it for destruction. We're watching it for the monsters. And we got that. You know? Kaiju <laughs> action is what we want, y'all. And that's what exactly what we that's got. That's all we got right It was there. awesome. I will say that uh, so I did sucked. think uh, Brian Tyree Henry was funny sometimes, though. I know you didn't like him. I need to watch Because you didn't watch the other ones, though. Because yeah. in this one, I was just like, why they make him like that? That's how, that's how his character is. He's well, like see, that. That's what I said. Like, I don't. He's I don't, that. Um super funny podcast conspiracy guy it wasn't the funniness it was something else i don't want to say it on here he's like goofy mm, now i'll tell you later off camera oh okay yeah. All right. <laughs> well i thought it was hilarious especially when he was like talking about his he gets talking about his podcast yeah i know he's like that was my podcast funny. of 100 listeners because to me yeah. you know obviously we podcast yeah. so it was funny to me that he was always talking yeah. about his podcast and, like <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I won't get. Into, well, we're getting to the details. I'm sorry, like, gotta, sorry. Yeah, we get into the details. <laughs> it's a good movie, yeah. though. That but I mean, it's the, fun. The action was really good. The movie is fun. Like it's like a fantasy adventure movie, yeah. and it knows that down to like the music. Yeah, it had, it had all these like '80s like like uh, synthesized yeah. like beats, but you think with like an '80s epic adventure fantasy right. movie. Yeah, like. That's the vibe I was getting. I was like, I'm on board with this. It, the movie knows what it is. Yeah. It knows you're not there to like, you know, get emotional about humans. You yeah. just want to see people. You don't want to see monsters fight. I, Let them fight. I was emotional about the monsters. I told you at the end, I was like, oh, I'm about to cry over here. Oh, because of, of Mini Kong. Well, end. yeah. I can't talk about the end. Yeah. But yeah, the but ending. Mini, Mini Kong made you emotional. Yes, he did. Yeah. He was cute too. Is that a Mini Kong? <laughs> I, I don't know why I love that part from the trailer. Oh, yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on. But this movie is so much fun, y'all. Yeah. Like, uh, if you like just sheer battles and fights and kaiju, and this movie's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like in that aspect, if yeah. you if you're going in, like, I just want to see epic spectacle fights. Plenty That's of that. That's what you're gonna get. And actually, they're, they're really long too. Yeah, the fights. There's a lot of fighting. I will say there were some times I thought the CG wasn't very good. Yeah. There was times rough. where like where Kong was on screen, yeah. like in the earlier parts of the film, and I was like. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. The budget went towards the back end of the yeah, film. Yeah, it did. In the beginning, <laughs> it was a little rough. He got the back like, step, so it was, it was a little rough. Fight, this, <laughs> this is some rough looking CGI, but uh, but when you get to the meat, the meat, from the meat fights. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that shit's awesome! I can't wait for this one to come out on stream and watch it uh, at home again because the fights were dope. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all right. Moving on to the next film, uh, The Wind. This is something you watched. I have no I, idea what this is. I did. This is old. It's from 2018. Um, and I believe it was originally like a Shutter IFC film. Um, so I'm not sure uh, what platform it okay. was on. But it came, it's out now this month on, um, I want to say Shutter. I'm not sure. No, it's AMC+. Plus. Um, anyways, I gave it two and a half stars. It's okay. kind of like an 1800s Western story mm. um, about this woman who who's out. It's like before, you know. Back in the old days when people didn't have, like, they were out there in the middle of nowhere, you know, trying to build up towns and stuff. So there's this couple that's there and then a new couple moves near them. Okay. And then that's when things kind of, like, start going the left ways. (laughs) But it has a lot to do with, like, you know, loneliness, um, grief, uh, mental illness and things like that. Um, And it's got... It seems like there's a supernatural element and and the I guess the trailer and stuff like that. So that's what kind of took messed it up for me. That's okay. why I rated it two and a half because there isn't. <laughs> but the story itself is still pretty good. It's kind of like the it comes at night, right? It's like you expecting one thing, mm-hmm. but it's not that. That's what will get you. Yeah. The but the performance in this was really, really good. Like the main character, you know, a lot of the scenes, she's by herself and she does a Holding really, really down. great job. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's the wind, y'all. Uh, check that one out at your own risk, apparently. <laughs> or just going with the managed expectation. Yeah, of, managed of, expectation. Of what it actually is. Yeah. All right. So the next film we watched, uh, so we got the first Omen uh, coming out here yeah. pretty soon. So in preparation, we're revisiting all the Omen films. All the Omen films. So the next one that we watched was the classic 1976, The Omen. 
Uh, we gave that three out of five stars. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's actually a really good movie. It was good. Now this is one I actually do feel like it's a little long. It is. It long. run. It, I re- I reached a point where I was like, yeah. I think I even checked. I was like, how long? How much? Yeah, in this it movie? is long. It's yeah. long. Maybe because maybe because we already know what's gonna happen. Yeah, probably. That it. I don't know. Uh, but it yeah. does run for a little bit. But uh, but it's still good though. Yeah, there's a story. lot of elements to this that I really like, and that I'm hoping that carry over to the first home. Yeah, I hope so too. Mainly the themes, mm-hmm. like that that Latin choir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want that shit to be I, it probably won't be <laughs> you never but know I do want them to easter egg it at some yeah. point in the first omen that uh, would be fun I actually really like that shit a lot yeah I did like this movie um, I, I guess my my issue is the parents right it's just like come on now y'all get it together yeah yeah but overall it was it was good yeah and uh, there's a lot of cool moments in this the concepts are good that kid is creepy as hell yeah. where'd he find him at I don't know but he looks creepy he got that look where he like he is evil that's an evil little boy that <laughs> little know boy is evil found him at, I don't know where they got him at they cast him effective. really well yeah uh, but yeah if you've never seen it go check out the the uh, the, the classic I movie. wish we had done this cause me and AJ got invited to go to this event um, called Center Sunday a couple weekends ago and it was sponsored by the first Omen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I wish we had watched this movie because we had There's trivia. certain things we couldn't remember. Yeah. And it was like some things I was like, dang, like I don't remember that. It was like super detailed stuff. Like you would only know if you just watched the movie or you watch yep. it all the time or something like that. Yep. And I was like, dang. And then we watched it this time. We were like, <laughs> if we had... I could, you know, if we had known that, we would have got at least better scores. But yeah, we got like third place or something like that. Oh uh, yeah, we did actually. We did pretty good. On yeah, the, on the horror, on the we, horror we trivia, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, but yeah, check out the Omen, y'all. This this is a classic one. It's got the seventies vibes to it. The music is dope. Um, it's creepy. Um, some decent effects at times yeah. for certain things. Uh, and then it spawned a whole franchise mm-hmm. for better or for worse. Yeah, uh, which is the next film we're going to talk about. Uh. This one came out in, what is that, 78? 1978? Yep. Two years uh, later. Damien, Omen 2. We gave this a two and a half out of five. Yeah. And to me, the story wasn't as good. No. Nah. But I did like some of the the kills in this one. Yeah, it had some good stuff in like there. Like the elevator scene. Yeah. That was pretty brutal. The ending was pretty cool. So like some of the the kills were a lot better in this one. Obviously, because in the first one, he was a little bitty kid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so in this one... Um, well, in just case you don't know the story of the omen, right? So with the first film, though, it's about you know the Antichrist being born, mm-hmm. right? So they, the this, the parents these parents don't realize that they having Antichrist. And he's mm-hmm. like around four or five years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, Damon Omen too, he's now a teenager yeah. at a military academy, um, and it plays out from there, right? Yep. Yeah. So with uh, teenage Damien, is trying a to bit, fulfill his he's coming into it, yeah, coming his into duties. his duties, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that those aspects were better than the first one, but the story itself to me wasn't as as interesting, I guess, because he was just in this school, you know, and I don't know. I just feel like the first one was a little bit more more stuff in there. Yeah, I, I think it's I think I see what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, this is one. I, yeah, I guess you're right. I don't really have a, like a whole lot to say about it because it's hard to say stuff on this without giving spoilers True. to the franchise as a whole. Yeah. Um, but like you said, the kills are good. The mm-hmm. concept is good. Mm-hmm. Like this whole antichrist thing and how to beat it and stuff. Like mm-hmm. all that stuff is good. Um, and I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember like, like what was the. Oh, I remember now. I'm trying to remember like, like what's the threat of like who's trying to kill, mm-hmm. Damien in this one. It's the it's the third one that I was really thinking about that really had like the the dumbness to it. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, we watched that one this month. Yeah, but this almost feels like a B seventies movie, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Like it has that B movie vibe. Yeah. Where you could tell that like the budget on this like it just wasn't as big of a film. Right. So oddly, I'm surprised, but maybe be, given the time this came out, this is a lot. Yeah. The first film. Yeah. Dealing with like the Antichrist and shit like that. It's yeah, a lot. It's a lot. Especially the way that that film ends. Like, mm. you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, we're going to continue to watch the rest of the Omen franchise yes. in preparation for the first Omen, which we're hearing it's some good, good things about. That it's actually I'm terrifying. Excited. I'm ready. I want like, I want a scary I'm ass excited. movie. Yeah. Uh, you best believe we're doing a review on that, y'all. So be ready. 
Um, but that's it. Those are all. But that's movies. it. That's all we watched. The we last watched a lot. The no, last that's film. Not, that's that we, all we watched. A lot of. Shit. We watched a lot of stuff, uh, and that doesn't even include like the TV stuff that we watch. I know. Uh, but yeah, Damon Omen Two was the last one we watched in uh, March. Um, we also watched TV stuff. So let us know if you're interested in us talking about TV because we watched. Uh, we've been watching Shogun, trying to catch up on that. Mm-hmm. I've been watching Monarch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Watch Monarch. New leg, new legacy. Yeah, I haven't finished that yet, but I've been watching that. Um, we started Three Body Problem. I want yeah. to I mean, watch next. We that shit's hard. That. I actually really, you know me, I like high concept shit. So yeah. I'm like, I'm all over the shit. Westworld type shit. Yeah. I'm it's all on good. it, y'all. Yeah. We did watch, we didn't talk about the documentaries we watched, but we did watch Quiet on the Set. Yep. And then the other one we watched was called like Lovers, Stalker, Killer. That was crazy. Y'all That's should something you watch that. Right? If y'all like drama, that was crazy. I didn't see that, right? That was Mm-mm. you. Okay, yeah. Nah, you that. I think I told you about it. Yeah, probably. I'm pretty sure I did. I walked you through it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure you did. That was crazy. Uh, I just, I'm just thinking about it. We both th- watched Love is Blind seasons five and six. Ooh, half five? I was trying to give you a little fist bump. I don't know. I don't want to high five the Love is Blind. I want to do a fist bump to Love no, is Blind. No, don't act like that. I cut it on one time and you were sucked right in. All right, look, y'all. You sat with me the whole time listening to Let's this be show. Real. Watching this show. The only reason I was watching it is because I'm there for the ridiculous drama. <laughs> That's the entertainment. I don't give a fuck about the sensitive parts. Where they, oh, they're falling in love. I don't care. Yeah. I want to see the drama. He does. He worry about out. the drama. Because even if I was kept watching it, he was like, let me know what happens. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, even remember that was at one time. Remember? We, yeah, I started a new season. And I was like. Oh, yeah. It was like in the beginning. They were just like talking. I was like, yeah. it's kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah like, he did say I need to get like to the interesting Wait, wait till the they drama. start actually picking their people and yeah. stuff like that. When they're down to like two. Yeah. Because that's when the drama crazy. sets in. I want to see. I just like to see when they meet. And if they don't match. Oh, man. That he, shit is hilarious. He laughs his ass off That shit is that so shit. cringy. He'd like, he be like, oh, Lord. Like, no. Yeah. He like going to like her. Like the most, <laughs> well, I ain't going to get into it. Yeah, I know. I ain't going to get into it. But anyway, uh, that's all the films that we watched in March, y'all. Let us know if you want us to talk about the TV that we watched, too. <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult to keep up with the TV. Because with films, it's, you know, it's one sitting, one movie. Yeah. TV, you got to watch a lot of episodes. And then, oh, I know someone know. asked us. I think it was Bonnie that asked us about the new... Uh, Which one? What? what uh, the Walking Dead. Uh, um, I'm not a Walking the, Dead fan. Well, the problem is I stopped watching after Glenn died, and so I'm way behind. So I haven't even looked at this new show, spinoff show, um, even though I heard it was really, really good. Wow. It's just that okay. I'm way behind in the story. So, like, I didn't even know that those two people were together. So yeah. there's no point in me watching that um, unless I were to go all the way back to the beginning because I don't even remember the earlier seasons either. So yeah, and I haven't watched that. I, I've never been a Walking Dead fan. Like I didn't even finish season one. I actually I started watching The Walking Dead back when we were dating. I remember mm-hmm. watching it at your apartment while you were at work. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that's when I first started watching The Walking Dead. Oh, that's, wow. That's a long that. ass time that's ago. A long time ago. I couldn't get into it. It wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah. I just found it kind of boring. Um, but yeah, let us know if there's uh, films that y'all watched in March that you think we should we need to watch. Uh, you know, we try to watch as many films as we can. There's only so much, so much time in the day. So much time. I'm motherfucker got to go to work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but, hey, look, thank you all so much if you watched or you tuned into this whole uh, list that we ran through. There's a lot of films. So thank you all if you made it this far to the end of, end of the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we got a lot going on, y'all. We did a lot of reviews in the month of March. We, we told y'all which ones we we uh, did videos on. We got some great stuff coming up. The first Omen video is coming. Uh, we got a members-only video that's... Uh, either has dropped or will be dropping uh, about drag me to hell check that one out if you're interested in supporting us we'll be doing more members only content as well um what else got big oh well by the time this gets posted i don't know if the giveaway will, will be up but we'll, we'll be up still i don't know but we do have an instagram giveaway if you did catch this for the first omen yeah, we have the tickets we're giving away thursday april 4th so I I mean potential I would like for this to be up. You're gonna put this on the podcast anyway, so yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, hopefully it's still up. But anyway, it's on Instagram. Yeah, hey, that's another reason to stay Go tuned into us, y'all. Because yeah. sometimes we'll try to do giveaways. Giving when we away can. some tickets. Um, I feel like I'm on the radio. We're giving away some tickets yep. to <laughs> the first Omen. <laughs> give it away! Give it away! Give it away now. <laughs> no. You know a song like. You no, might remember, close no, no, not this that song. show out. Do you remember, <laughs> remember, that, remember that Alien Ant Farm song, Smooth Criminal? No. 
You don't remember that, do you? No. Are you going to sing it? Was, no, I'm not going to sing it. Sing it. it. It's, it's I don't Mike, know what you're talking about. Maybe it's, I, it's the Michael Jackson Smooth Criminal. I'll sing but it. But they like a rock Maybe version. I remember it. <laughs> He's like, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? You remember that joke? I know that song, but I don't remember the That's the rock version, though. No, no, no. I don't know it's about gonna, that. Dun, 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 the dude be going like this. <laughs> no, I don't know you remember that. that? <laughs> like, if you, if you, if, well, maybe you don't remember, but nah. uh, I, I don't know why, but it popped up on my YouTube today, and I was watching it. And one, it's like a nostalgia trip. Okay, because the you band, the band was called other girl. Alien Alien Ant Farm. <laughs> this shit came out in like the like early two thousands, yeah. I think. Oh, okay, like two thousand one or something. Right. Well, how would I remember that? I, I don't watch know. Shit. YouTube in two thousand one. Like, I'm talking about this is an MTV show. Oh, okay, like a music I don't video. know. Uh, where are you at? <laughs> I thought you I said it was a you YouTube right video. Uh, Wait, anyway. was there YouTube in 2001? No. Oh. I don't think YouTube came out to like 2007 or 2006. Oh, like, really? ran out. No, are you it was, sure? Was, no, you're right. I thought it, it was, was like 2004 that. or something like that. It doesn't matter. I don't Either remember way. that. Either way, y'all. Uh, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Make sure you, <laughs> you like this, uh, this podcast. Make sure you share. Make sure you comment. We'd love to discuss things even beyond horror. So in this video, in this video, you can actually... Uh, talk to us about any films as we talked yes. about all the films we watched. Um, yep, I don't so, know what song I was about to sing, but, I don't know either, <laughs> but drop all that down in the comments, y'all. Put it on the QA on Spotify because that, that that boosts our engagement too. And make sure Why y'all are you picking the microphone. I don't know, up? it kind of feels good to pick it up, to be honest. It does feel good to pick it up. Uh, but make sure y'all subscribe to stay tuned in, y'all, and uh, to continue the discussion on all things horror. We'll see y'all on the next one. Peace. I held it that time. That was a long one. I did held it. I'll see what you're going to do when I held it like that. <laughs> All right, y'all, we out.